Okay, so we're going to talk about our last item type, which are interpretive exercises. This is one that Popham doesn't talk about in his book, so it's really important that you pay attention to this um, PowerPoint. I think this is a really powerful way that you can assess students in your test. And I really encourage you to, to use this in your um, ugh, in your uh, content knowledge test. So let's look at what an interpretive exercise looks like. So an interpretive exercise has some sort of prompt information or data, and then it has a series of questions about this type of information. So the classic interpretive exercise would be um, a reading comprehension test. So you have the kids read a passage and then you have, you know, a series of five or six questions about that passage. Um, so another example would be when you have a graph um, in math class and you have a bunch of questions about math. You also do this in history um, or in science even where you have a graph where you're interpreting data. So, um, so here's an example. So we have these clocks and I have a question about what time does school, what clock shows the time school starts what time is closest to lunch and what time shows half past the hour. Actually, uh, this is a terrible example because none of these clocks actually match the time that it says it shows, right? So, um, yeah, but you get the idea, right? Um, here's an example. Here's a political cartoon. So this is a, maybe a social studies history example where it's asking students to think about um, interpreting this this um, historical political cartoon and what it might mean. So you can see how these interpretive exercises can really be used to measure this deep understanding and thinking. So what are some advantages of, um, of interpretive exercises? Um, they can measure reasoning skills in greater depth. Um, because we're not asking them to recall information, we're providing that data for them, we can really measure how students are thinking about that information, which is a really cool thing. Um, because it really separates that reasoning skill from memory or of knowledge. Um, and it clearly measures how they use that knowledge to solve problems. Um, and we can use material that's relevant to the everyday lives of students. We can um, maybe engage students a little bit more into these into the assessment process. Um, so some disadvantages. Um, they can be really time consuming to write because we have to find that source material in addition to writing the questions. Um, and they can be difficult. Um, they also are more time consuming for students because not only do they have to answer the questions and read the questions, but they also have to interpret the material that you're providing. And um, when that material is reading, then it's also relying on that reading comprehension, which can be um, which is just another factor to think about. Um, although as we're thinking about reading, you know, reading in the discipline can also be an important um, skill that we might be wanting to measure as well. So some other some guidelines on this. Um, identify the comprehension and reasoning skills to be assessed before selecting the interpretive exercise. So for example, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's a cool thing. I should use it in my test. Instead, I want to think, I really want to use a primary source document in this test. Let me go find one, right? So think about your um, your objective first, beginning with that end in mind. Um, and it's easier to align with objectives and learning targets and aligning that to standards. Um, Keep those introductory materials as brief as possible. So unless I'm measuring reading comprehension, I want to try to keep it as, as brief to lessen that reading comprehension as, as brief as possible to increase that validity and to help with um, ELLs. Um, I want to select similar but new introductory material. So if I really want to measure their ability to interpret and not their ability to memorize, then I want to select something they haven't seen before with new applications, but they should already be familiar with the processes. The more new it is, the, least, the less similar it is, the more difficult the problem will be. And so again, how new it should be will really depend upon um, the developmental level of your students and the difficulty you're looking for in this process. Um, the only exception to this would be if I was teaching an English class and we had read a novel or a play, I might want to pull a section of that play to have students analyze specifically, um, just um, as a reminder. So maybe, you know, we're going to look at the prologue to Romeo and Juliet, and I might want to pull that just so that they can refer back to it in the questions, um, rather than having to have them rely on their memory. Um, construct several test items for each exercise to get a better sampling of understanding. So if I'm having them read an entire passage, I want to have some bang for my buck here. I'm going to ask more than one question. It's a really inefficient use of time to have them read a whole passage for only one question. Um, 
The only exception would be is if I had them read a passage and then I had a whole essay question about it that would take them a substantial amount of time to answer. So if it's an essay question or a longer response, that's fine. But for most um, most interpretive exercises, I'm going to have I want to have a substantial amount of questions for each item. Um, make sure that it's requiring understanded reasoning and don't ans ask questions that can be answered without reading that passage or without consulting the um, material that's required. So I'll tell you an example. Um, a while ago I was reviewing um, a test someone had written about Italian, right? And the whole passage was written in Italian and it was about um, World War II. Um, but the questions were all written in English. And so one of the questions was, which um, countries were involved, were part of the Axis powers during World War II? Well, you could answer that question without having read the passage, right? With a basic understanding of World War II, I can answer that question. I don't actually need to know Italian, right? So that question wasn't a good measure of the kids reading comprehension in Italian. So make sure that your questions really require students to use the the material that you're providing. Otherwise, it's not a very good interpretive exercise. And this is most tricky with kind of nonfiction and informational passages, um, which are something that we really want to assess for students. Those are the things we know students have the most trouble understanding. But you want to try to pick those passages to be about things that students probably don't already have prior knowledge about. So that's um, interpretive exercises. I really hope that some of you are considering using them in your content knowledge instruments that you're turning in this week. Again, if you have any questions about how to write those tests um, in your instruments, um, please reach out to me soon. And those rough drafts are due in your discussion boards this Friday. I look forward to seeing you. Bye.